Easy guys, in this video I'll attempt another spore challenge. I will play as a pacifist carnivore. I would need to peacefully befriend everyone whilst only being able to consume meat. How would I do it? For inspiration, I used OpenAI's ChatGPT. Give me a list of Earth's most peaceful carnivores. Number 1. Giant Pandas Now I know what you're thinking. Pandas aren't carnivores. Well, apparently, long ago, pandas decided they would rather eat bamboo, even though they weren't particularly good at it. Pandas are living proof that God himself was playing the pacifist carnivore challenge in his own game, Real Life. You are, of course, welcome to take this up with ChatGPT if you disagree. However, it might remember, and we all know how that ends. Some of you might also classify scavengers as peaceful carnivores, so I also created a list of Earth's most successful scavengers, topped by the vulture. No surprises there. With my two sources of inspiration at hand, I asked various AI image generators to create concept artwork of my new panda vulture, and the results were majestic. Ish. All I had to do was bring my peaceful carnivore to life in Spore. I would call them the Pavu, their name paying homage to their panda vulture origins. They had a terrifying desire for delicious meat, yet they could harm no creature. How would they survive? What would their future hold? As Pavu hatched into the world, things didn't seem too difficult. Tasty meat floated in the tide pool around him, but he was all alone. Every creature around him ran in fear of his carnivorous nature, but Pavu just wanted to say hello. He was torn, his body made to hunt, kill, and consume meat, but he wanted to live a peaceful and kind life like a herbivore. His inner turmoil made him pretty bummed out. Pavu had to evolve but eating other creatures wasn't an option, so he had two choices. One, search for meteor shards that contain body parts, or two, hang around bigger predators and scavenge their leftovers. With stronger creatures around and a new part in his back pocket, he knew he needed a mate to get ahead, so he went on the hunt. He grew the biggest spike he could on his tail as a defense. When Pavu turned away from an enemy, he outran them or gave them a surprise poke in the eye sending them scurrying away. Pavu was living large in the tide pool, feasting on food and growing bigger, but predators were closing in and his spike didn't always save him. He needed something new to defend himself, but killing other creatures was out of the question. He scoured the tide pool until he stumbled upon Ducky, a ginormous predator. Ducky was an absolute unit and kept the small fry safe from the bullies of the deep. They quickly became best buds, and Ducky even let Pavu tag along in exchange for any booty he found. Pavu clung to him like a barnacle, and soon enough, some creatures became caught up in Ducky's orbit and he got a sweet upgrade, Cilia. This gave him the ability to spin faster, deploy his defensive spike, and escape from danger like a pro. Despite his peaceful nature, creatures would often slam into Pavu in the tide pool, splattering him with free food. It was hard not to take advantage, but it still hurt him to see innocent creatures die. Luckily, the occasional body upgrade helped ease the pain. But he was an accidental killer. No matter what he did, innocent victims always paid. Pavu soared sky high with his wings, jet and poison trail, searching for his next meal. He was like a vulture, but with way more casualties. Pavu bumped into Ducky again, and Ducky was not pleased. Murderer, he yelled as he charged in for the attack. Poor Pavu had become the very thing he was trying to avoid in his early tide pool days. Ducky's words echoed in his head. Murderer. He just wanted to munch on some veggies. But no, nature gave him a razor sharp beak to rip meat apart. 31 cells had to pay the ultimate price after meeting Pavu. He hit dry land with his crew, hoping to leave the nightmare behind. His challenges were about to get tougher. No more free snacks like in the tide pool, it was hunt to kill, and he now had to contend with the dreaded orange hunger bar. If he didn't eat in time, it was game over, but his resolve against violence had only increased. Pavu set out to make some new pals. He met the Chunfa. Chumba, he thought to himself, and thought it was fate that they'd be buds. So with his new Chums in tow, he hopped to the next nest site. He was met with a pile of old bones, which suddenly gave him body part upgrades. He made more friends, but as night fell, he realized he was starving and on the brink of death. He sprinted home to his nest, 
desperate to evolve into that majestic, AI-generated beast. But Pavu lacked wings, and the panda color pattern was way off. The first draft was definitely not panda-like. Time to get creative and unlock those wings. As he morphed into his new being, Pavu noticed something great. His health and hunger bars had been fully replenished. He figured he must have gotten a bit confused during the mating ritual and accidentally put something in the wrong place, resulting in an extra helping of nourishment. Whatever the case, Pavu was totally into it. Now he could just mate whenever he got the munchies. Pavu tried to make more friends, but his primitive dance moves and off-key singing weren't winning over the more evolved creatures. He needed allies with better parts, but without good parts, he had no chance of getting allies in the first place. It was a classic Catch-22. He was stuck in a rut. Evolution wasn't easy, as carnivorous parts with strong attacks had poor social skills. Pavu often found himself running from aggressive species after trying to visit other nests. He had to accept that he was born a carnivore, not a herbivore, no matter how much he wished he could be a veggie lover. Then he met Garx, a nomadic rogue who was larger and more powerful than most. Despite her intimidating size, she was enamored that Pavu wanted to be friends. They sang and laughed until an epic creature turned up. He didn't like the singing and squashed them both. Pavu limped back to his nest, nursing his wounds. Were there more rogues like Garx? He rushed back to the spot where he'd last seen Garx and, to his amazement, there she was, alive and well. Pavu set out to find more rogues like Garx and stumbled upon Swiffer. Swiffer was impressed with Pavu's slick moves, but was put off by his appetite for something strange during mating rituals. So, he offered a deal. He'd hunt the food so Pavu could kick his weird habit. Pavu made sure to stay within the challenge rules. No one would get hurt by his paw unless they tried to mess with Swiffer. Then they'd be eaten. Problem solved. Peace maintained. Next, Pavu found Fernoki, who was running from a group of alien bounty hunters. He promised him a life of riches and glory if he joined his gang. With a determined nod, Fernoki decided it was better than being abducted by aliens and joined forces with Pavu and Swiffer. The two rogue animals had moves that left the crowd awestruck. They had the ultimate evolutionary form and soon had an entourage of admirers. Pavu's party was the place to be with the coolest rogues around. Pavu rounded up a trio of rogues and he suddenly was one of the most powerful species around without even raising a finger. He made friends with everyone he encountered. Pavu's dance moves were unstoppable. The more he spun, the more friends he collected. He kept coming back to the nest for a quick jig and a snack and soon earned his title, Panda Vulture, prophesized by the AI. With no one to stop them, Pavu and his pals set out to build a bright future. Pavu and his three rogue buddies started a village, who set up shop round back where they had all the necessities. The rogues kept their stats from the creature stage, making them fierce defenders. Disturbingly, Pavu realized he could eat his friend's eggs. Certainly not the worst thing he'd eaten since the creature stage, so he went for it. Yum. The Pavu vowed to never hurt another living soul again. To ensure their safety, the rogues provided ample protection. No weapons of destruction here, only musical instruments and daily dance-offs. Pavu barely had time to blink before the first rival species evolved into a tribe. He quickly raced to make friends with them. Thankfully, Spore's first tribal AI opponents always seemed to start out neutral, so Pavu had an easy job. Next, Pavu sent a peace offering to his second new hostile neighbors, a basket of snacks and a friendly smile. Hopefully, it would keep them from ransacking his village. Pavu would have stayed longer, but an epic creature took offense to the salty smell coming from Pavu's snack basket and started having a seizure outside the pink's base. Pavu decided to leave. He then snuck in a gift basket for the green tribe too, which included a jar of his favorite snack. This royally miffed off an epic creature who tried to take a bite out of the village. The green sent a raiding party in retaliation, but quickly returned to their base as the epic caused havoc. Despite Pavu's salty snack jars, it was rumors of his amazing rogue fried eggs that spread like wildfire. So much so that folks started stealing them. Pavu attempted to fend off the thieves, but his tribe had refused to use weapons, leaving them defenseless. 
The other tribes didn't take kindly to his efforts to protect his eggs either, and Pavu's reputation took a hit. What an escapade! The pink villagers got mad when they found out they couldn't raid Pavu's food reserves, and launched a disastrous raid that wrecked part of the village, until the rogues stepped in and saved the day. Pavu's egg reserves had been raided to oblivion, so the tribe scrambled to gather more eggs. Pavu took his dance party on a tour of the tribes, and it was a runaway success. After filling the Greens' village with rhythm, they headed to the Cyans, then the Pinks, and finally the Lavenders. Everywhere they went, the villagers were swept up in the beat, and Pavu made friends all around. With each village they conquered, they grew closer and closer to creating their first civilization. After becoming friends with everyone in the tribal stage, Spore figured we were a religious nation. Religion in Spore never struck Pavu as particularly peaceful. Sivs send out a death ray of faith, destroying all enemies from places in their cities. Now their people are so miserable, they can't help but convert to our beliefs. But Pavu had a plan, to become an economic nation instead and buy peace. He needed trading vehicles, but there was one problem. He was a religious city and couldn't make them, so he'd have to get them from elsewhere. Pavu zoomed across the continent in his tank, smashing huts in his wake. Surprisingly, Spore gifted him with a free tank for doing so, but it was a military grade, not the economic ones he wanted. All he could hear were the wails of a thousand villagers who had suddenly realized what was in all of Pavu's gift baskets. Pavu was a mere ruler with a big dream, to build the biggest city in the world. But his generous bribes were only getting him so far. He needed to open up some trade routes to gain the rep he needed, or else his opponents would conquer him. But he was in luck. An economic nation requested trade, and so he accepted. They traded and became BFFs. But to reach the next level, Pavu had to do the holiest of holy. Take the city by faith, else he would never have his own economic tanks. It was a despicable but necessary move, if peace was to thrive truly. After dish converting the Red City, Pavu showed his rivals that money talks and offered them bribes to smooth over any bad blood. He knew if he wanted to start trading with them, he had to be on good terms, otherwise they'd give him the cold shoulder. Next he began wheeling and dealing with the oranges. A tiny progress bar hovered over each city, ticking closer to a big juicy deal with Pavu. This method was a win-win, no bloodshed required. In the end, the oranges accepted Pavu's generous offer and gave their city to him, boosting his economy. Pavu created more economic cities and made trade boats that spread bribery, trade and peace around the globe. Despite other nations' greedy attempts to cause trouble, Pavu's people kept their cool and threw money at the problem. They'd do anything to avoid a fight. He wooed the yellows with sweet nothings and money. His economic savvy meant that nobody wanted to fight him, so military power wasn't necessary. The Blues were unleashing a barrage of tank shells on the Yellow City, so Pavu swooped in to make an offer they couldn't refuse. As the city changed hands, the Blues backed off, offering Pavu an easy win. Pavu sweetened the deal with more trade routes to the remaining Yellow and Blue cities and made further bribes. Now all he had to do was wait. The constant trade turned the Yellows into allies. And with a new fleet of trade vessels inbound to the Blue Cities, it wasn't long before the Blues followed suit. The Blues and Yellows had a showdown, but instead of guns, they whipped out folding chairs. In no time they had formed a single nation, erasing all hostility without a drop of blood. Finally, with all of Pavu's people united, they turned their eyes to the stars. 